Yo, welcome back. Today we're fitting two EV chargers. We've got an EVEC and a OMI Pro EV chargers. I'm actually subcontracting out to Mitch, Bright Spark Electrical, because he's got a big contract doing absolutely loads of them around the country. So, done a few of them today, done some with Nick. I've done a few of my own, so I'm well experienced in it. This is a new build property. They do already have that, but obviously it's just like a trickle charge, so it's no good. Just a 16 amp. We want full juice, 7 kilowatt one. So, we've got EV Ultra. 10 mil tails to the new board. Then we've got the EVEC charger, um, untethered, so they can just plug it in and keep the cable in their boot. Um, pretty simple, I've just taken the cover off, taken these screws out. So I did struggle a little bit with those screws, but I found a little trick. If you get your wearer bit with a massive extension bit, it fits down the back of the uh, thing to get them out. What we're gonna do is drill 10 mil holes and ultra EV clips all the way along here, all the way around here to the charger. It's gonna be situated on the front so they can plug it straight in. Um, 25 mil stuffer straight into the bottom of the EVEC charger, get that all connected up now and sealed and then mount that on the wall. So the charger itself is a little bit different. So you're like, I'm gonna drill a 25 mil hole, get the stuffer in, tighten that up, get the cable in, terminate it, and then seal that unit back up. And then you just hook it on to this unit, like the wall plate, and then attach it using those four screws. So it's been finding this Milwaukee impact. Milwaukee, I keep saying Milwaukee, it's Milwaukee. Milwaukee impact really good because you just fire everything in it. Obviously everything now has hex bits. So I've already started doing 20 mil and then I realized I need 25. So let's fire this straight through. So that's through. And then what I do is I like take the, take the end off like that at the top, take that bit off and then just put that straight through. Um, oh, tell a lie. Before I do that, I bought a new tool. This here is the new tool. So it's a reaming tool, just a little Amazon special jobby. Comes with loads of blades. So you can hear them rattling around inside. That will annoy everyone, that will. So literally all you do is just get it on and run it around. Obviously, it doesn't really matter here because it's plastic. It's more for a metal environment. But get rid of all the burrs and then just run your finger around and they'll fall off. I'll go and get another pair of grips in a minute and grab the inside. But you can normally do them pretty tight by hand, to be fair. I do need to get some flat jaw Nipex grips. So that'll do for the minute, and then I'll tighten it on in a second, and obviously we'll tighten that bit up once we've got the cable in. I don't actually have an ergo strip on me, so we're going to be using this tool here, which is a, I think it is actually designed as an EV Ultra stripper. So you just lift that up, put the cable in, put it down, and then wiggle it around, and it should cut it with that fine little blade there, and you can adjust the height of how much it cuts. So I've adjusted that about right. After a bit of playing, I figured out how to use that tool properly, and then you can just pull it all the way off. Oh, he says I've not quite it further enough. With these chargers, I couldn't figure out where the earth goat went to start with. Obviously, that's your earth going to the socket as such. Um, and then I thought, where does it go? So I had to have a little read of the instructions. I didn't see that PE there. So that's where the main earth goes because I was just reading power like a donut. Made off the uh, CT connection there. So we've got red going into CT1 and blue going into CT1. And then it goes into that green block down the back just there. So that's got to click in. But I'll try and bend all this back once got that clicked in. That's the charger all back together, all sealed. So now we're gonna get the mounting plate and mount it within the specified um, heights for EVs. So we'll get that mounted on the front there. Then we'll get some cleats drilled. Well, drill the holes and then smash the linear clips all the way in down to the meter cupboard. Bit further on, charger's all mounted with the grub screws. That's all fine. Linear clips, 10 mil drill bit, drilling it, clipping it nice. I've lasered, lasered this bit so that's sound show you a little trick so obviously you don't want to bend this flat so i've marked where the cable goes there and there and on that side and i'm going to grind her out just take the corner off there just so it goes around the corner nice and then i'll clip all the way down behind there just realized as well it won't fit behind that a minute ago so the pipe which is gas main coming in so i'm gonna have to like drill behind the brick and poke it around Typical, nothing ever goes right for me. And we've got the WCD IP rated enclosure mounted on there. We've got a bit of FlexiCon. So we've got the FlexiCon waterproof 25 mil gland. We've got a 25 mil hole drilled there. So we're gonna poke the FlexiCon in. I'm gonna bring the FlexiCon in across the surface here, all the way to the back and then loop it up at the back. So it can go straight up out into the um, enclosure. Cause I've seen it so many times where water sits on this inside lip here. So I don't wanna just bring the tail through there and then they potentially could be exposed to water. So I'd rather bring it in, take it right to the back and loop it up. Um, so it's coming out of the back and then we're going straight into those Henley blocks there, which are nice. And then obviously straight into the earth bar block, which is perfectly acceptable. So this here is a KMS switch because it's a new build. So I presume there's gonna be like a 63 amp fuse in there. So I said what we're gonna be doing in there, this side, what we're gonna do is wire in the 10 mil earth and the 10 mil live and neutral all into here. You're fine using 10 mil because it's only powering the one circuit. Um, and obviously it's a 40 amp, so you've got 
obviously mains cables coming in and then obviously you've got your four mil ultra ev so it's perfectly acceptable you've got your type 2 surge protection device your c40 rcbo and main switch built into one so obviously if you trip the one uh, sorry if you do it that way if you trip the rcd it will trip the rcd with it so it's like an rcbo but it's your main switch as well and then it comes with these nice pre-insulated installed buzz bars obviously you just check everything's torqued off so pretty much we're nearly there just wire everything off as you can see as well i've taken over the drive you just need about 100 different little bits and bobs obviously here i couldn't get behind so i had to drill on an angle and then drill on an angle like that way to get behind that pipe come along i'll laser up straight up clip it up straight in everything's all glanded in everything's all tightened up we've got these little cool jelly crimps from deligo so you literally just double over the ends twist it push it in and then crimp that down with like your pliers and then it inserts some gel into it and it obviously molds them together so that's just extending the ct clamp from the ev ultra to the ct clamp ct clamps going on the incoming into the building so that's fine and then i've wired in obviously the live and neutral and the um tails this side so that can be all ready for testing i have realized i'd never said about testing the charger so testing the charger i've got like a special adapter where you plug it in and then test it on there hence i've put it back together so i can test it afterwards we're all done we're all tested just set up the app all commissioned so that's all done all nice neat cable run all the way in here fuse boards all labeled up all tested jobs are good done. so on to the next one on to job number two so we're at the second premises we've got a fuse board and everything isolator all in there so we're having the new little board which is a wced board again just this isn't obviously an ip rated one because it's in a cupboard and it's indoors in the porch so same again just a c40 with built-in surge mcb and basically like an rcbo main switch style thing so that the mounting plate this is an omi charger so a bit different so this is the plate off the back of the charger and they want that the other side of the gate so they're having ev ultra drilled through the back there clipped all the way along into a whisker box because you have to this comes pre-wired so it comes with a pre-sealed from the factory thing thing cable so I've got to put a junction box down there, a 607 whisker box, and then he wants it mounted up here. So it's got to be within 1.2 and 1.4 the screen has. Overall, these Omi chargers, I'm not the greatest fan of them, but they are pretty cool with the LED screen, how it tells you like how much you're saving against a petrol car, which we'll set up on the app and show you. Sorry, I've not been showing absolutely every single step. One, I don't really want to because it's not really what I'm trying to show. I'm not trying to show like a how-to video because they're fairly straightforward and I don't want every homeowner just thinking, or DIY Dave thinking, oh yeah, I can just do it myself because there is certain steps, which obviously if you're not an electrician, you might mess up. On this charger, first thing I've done, I've screwed this wall plate back and then I'm gonna grab the actual charger itself and it's got a hook at the bottom and top and then the sides, you've got these little screws. So I'll hook this on and get that mounted and then I can laser down where the cable comes down so that you can see on the left hand side, that's the cable with the flex pre-wired. Laser that down, get that cleated down to my uh, whisker box, which I'm gonna now drill through there and see which course of bricks I line on, which I can smash along and linear clips. Let's do a nick, let's record and see if I can blow the brick out or not. Same drill bit, 16 mil. I'm just gonna go straight with the, uh, no, tad lie. I'm gonna drill through now with a tiny little six mil bit. Just add a little bit of a measure up, so I should be 23 and a half inches. So 23 and a half inches. So it should pop out. I think that mortar line there, I should pop out there, or it might be the one above. But what I'll do is I'll just put a little tiny, little pencil mark. Oh, good job I'm good, innit? I've hit that on the bullseye. Call me out, San who, yeah? Job's good enough. Right, pull that out. That EV Ultra can go, obviously, this side here. What I'll do is I'll just leave that a slack, but I'll mount the whisker box outside now strip enough off to do the through crimp with way goes get that all connected up and then uh, do that side and work my way back got a 607 whisker box down there with a stabilizer level and the marksman marksman that all you can see the four green chalk lines get that drilled plugged mounted here we've got some 32 amp way goes and we've also got two 25 mil stuffers which will be going in the bottom always do them into the bottom so then it can never actually just gravity it can never get water into it really unless the, the box gives away but those boxes are ip67 so or ip68 i think no ones might be so they're more than waterproof that's that whisker box all mounted 
I've drilled 10 mil holes, bit uneven here, but I wanted one right at the top because you can see it swoops in. So securing it there. And then I wanted one like halfway down on the central part of the brick, you know, where I've still got a bit of space there so it didn't crack the brick. And then I wanted one in this central brick there. Obviously you've got to put it in plumb, but as you can see, the laser line's right next to the edge of the brick there on that one and on that one. Whereas that one, it's fine. And that one, it's fine. And it's literally, once that's clipped, that'll look sound. So it would be nice and level and it's more than adequate like that. But I'll just show you these linear clips. So you just pinch it in, a little bit rough on your fingers, but pinch it in place. And then normally you use a rubber mallet, but when you don't, you just get loads of insulation tape and then give it a good whack. And normally what I do is, obviously I'm holding the camera, I'd normally have one hand down here, pulling it nice and tight and then whacking it with the other. But little trick, don't whack it so hard towards the end so that it doesn't pinch the cable. So now I can still adjust it left or right. And then at the very end, once it's nice and tight, give it a good whack again and it'll pinch it in place. This side of the EV Ultra stripped, I've not tightened up the gland yet. I'm gonna cleat all of this now with the linen clips all the way through. Let's poke through into inside. That's this side all pretty much done. Connection's done with the little jelly crimps as well. And then um, the way goes all done as well. So I've got the lid there. I've just got the pack out hoover out. I was sitting on that. I'm gonna hoover all this mess up. Oh, sorry I didn't get any footage again. I've ended that job. I'm back home now. I've just, that job went really well actually. The only downside was the Omi mount thing where you put the plug in. I don't know if it's designed like this, but you put it in and it kind of clicks in, but then you can like pull it really hard and it comes out. So it's not really the best design. And then the bracket as well, I'm pretty sure I already showed you this, it's plastic. And when you've got the weight of the cable on there, it just droops a bit. So ideally they could have used a bit of thin metal or something just to sustain, uh, sustain the weight of the EV Ultra cable. But at the end of the day, it's a good charger, two done in one day, um, could have done more, but these are probably like my fourth charger really doing. I've done one by myself and that took me a long time because it was naturally my first one. And then these two took me longer than they should have, but naturally it's my first two and they're both different chargers. So it's just getting to terms with it. And now I know how these go, tips and tricks. It's like everything, once you've done it once, you're not too bad at it. Gonna end this one here though, as I need to go in, get some tea and wake up and do it all again tomorrow. The joys of work, eh? But I hope you all found some little tips and tricks from this video or just generally just saw me fitting some car chargers. So yeah, catch you on the next one. Bye.